Number 15. How many values of theta satisfy 2 cosine squared theta plus 7 cosine theta minus 4 equals 0, where theta is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi? Basically, theta is some value between 0 and 2 pi, including both 0 and 2 pi. So we do need to look at the endpoints. We can interpret this as a function, really, it's a trig function. It, it is a trig equation, really, it says equals zero. But if we take this and we establish a function, I'm actually going to do all of this in the graphing calculator, so I'm going to put it in terms of y equals. We'll establish a function 2 cosine squared theta plus 7 cosine theta minus 4. And if we look at a graph of this function, we're going to look for where the function crosses the x-axis where it is equal to 0. We're looking for all the x-coordinates where y is equal to 0. So, uh, of course, in the graph and calculator, we're going to use the variable key. So, you know, it's going to come out looking like an x. We also need to adjust our window settings. So, for this problem, from this point, I actually want to attempt to take some screen caps of my graph and calculator. Okay, if I'm doing this right, you should have a view of my TI-84 graph and calculator. Let me make some notes here. We are going to be putting this into our y equals menu. We will have to adjust our window settings to correspond with the values here. And in the calculator mode, you have to make sure that you're expressing all of this in radians, not degrees. So, actually, before I go into y equals, uh, if you go to the mode, let's make sure that we're set to radians in this problem. Uh, and that step is very important. Uh, because it says theta between 0 and 2 pi, we know that it's expressing it in radians. When it says anything in terms of pi, referring to an angle, uh, it is in radians. Let's go to y equals 2, and it's cosine squared theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in parentheses, I'm going to put a cosine of x, and then square that value. We're then adding plus or 7 cosine x minus 4. So basically, we're going to look for the zeros of this function. Wherever this function equals 0, that's the solution to our equation. Let's make sure we get a proper window here. The nice thing is they told us values to set for x. They're calling it theta, of course, but for x, it says from 0 to 2 pi, and that's inclusive. So let's, let's go ahead and set the x minimum value to 0, the x maximum value to, you can literally type in 2 pi, and just scroll down, and it will actually approximate that for you, which is nice. And I'm not quite sure of the y minimum or y maximum values at this point in time, so we'll just hit graph. We see a graph of this function. And it's very obvious that it only crosses the x-axis twice. So a sketch of this function coming from the calculator. Uh, between x equals 0 and x equals 2 pi looks approximately something like this. So we're only interested in where this function equals 0, where this entire quantity equals 0. In other words, where the y-coordinate is 0, where it crosses the x-axis. This occurs at two points, these two points right here. So the answer is C, 2. Number 16, this is a navigation problem. Juan Durand, very clever name there, stands in the middle of the field. He walks 25 steps on a bearing of 300 degrees, then he walks 40 steps on a bearing of 60 degrees. What is the least number of steps he will have to take to return to the spot he started from? The trick to this problem is the word bearing. When we're looking at a bearing in a navigation problem, uh, due north is zero degrees. So that would we did the conclusion that due east is 90 degrees, and so on and so forth. Um, 
when he's standing in the middle of a field, let's make him stand in the middle of a field. 25 steps in a bearing of 300 degrees. So due west would be 270. 300 would be... So he's actually walking this path. 300 degrees. This makes a 30 degree angle with a due west. 25 steps that way. Then he walks 40 steps on a bearing of 60 degrees. Bearing of 60 degrees would be headed northeast. Now this is zero. The bearing itself here is 60. And let me go ahead and make the side lengths in the same color. This is 25 steps. And then he turned and this was 40 steps. So to make it slightly more proportional, this is a much longer side. Uh, this gentleman ends up right here. And it says, what's the least number of steps you will have to take to return to the spot where he started from? So it's really a triangle problem because the shortest distance would be the straight line and now we have some triangles that have been created. Let's draw, let's redraw this whole triangle. Twenty-five, forty, and this is our unknown. This is what we're looking for. We'll call that Why not? <sighs> we need to get some angle degrees here, some measurements. So Let's think. We had established this was 30 degrees. So this makes a triangle here. If this is the right angle, and this is 30 degrees down here, and this must be 60 degrees. Um, and if you're looking at due north, uh, this is a straight line, so it must add to 180. It's a 60 plus 60 plus some other quantity makes 180. And that other quantity just happens to be 60. Then 60 times 3 makes 180. That means the angle in this triangle is 60 degrees. So what we have is a triangle. We know two sides and their included angle. We wish to find the angle opposite that. So the best approach would be the law of cosines. So we'll set it up as x squared equals 40 squared plus 25 squared minus 2 times 40 times 25 times the cosine of 60 degrees. Now, be careful of this problem because we're in degrees now. The last problem, we were in radians. So in our calculator, we will have to change the mode uh, back to degrees. I guess that's worth writing down since we're just doing a radian problem. So make sure that you're set to degrees for our angles in the mode in your calculator. Since we are taking a, a cosine, whenever we use trig functions, we need to be aware of the, uh, radians versus degrees. Let's simplify. 40 squared plus 25 squared is 2,225. We have minus 2,000 times the cosine of 60 is 1 half, 60 degrees. So x squared equals all of this, which is 1225. Take the square root of both sides to solve for x. We're talking about distance here, so we don't need a plus or minus, but it has to be a positive value. And this is a perfect square, it is a 35 squared. So the answer is B.